Two dudes and a cage. We are back. UFC 279 analysis and predictions. We're your hosts. I'm Charles Clark. And I'm Matt Johnson. And we have a great set of fights today. We've got UFC 279. And we're going to hit it off in the first early prelim with the Contender Series alumni, Darian Weeks versus Johan Lainese. Charles, I'll tell you what. Both of these fighters are well-rounded, and I just think Darian Weeks is a little bit superior, more superior grappling. I think he's going to grind it out. He's going to get that decision win, and he's going to make it look good. Man, man both these guys are, are, are hot prospects to me. Uh, Darian Weeks, man, he's a wrestler that's comfortable striking. Uh, he's got really explosive takedowns. Johan. Man, I lost some money last time he fought. I really thought he was going to come out with that win. He ended up, seemed like he just gave up in that fight, them body shots. Man, dude's a grappler. He's got KO power. He throws heavy punches. He looks to take you down, ground and pound. Um, He's a little bit slower of a striker. He's, I think Darian Weeks is more of a technical fighter. I really want to bet on Johan and his power, but I, th- I think I think he's just going to get sloppy and the way he gave up in his last fight, um, I just don't think I'll ever bet on him again. So I think Darian is just going to take this one again. And next up, a women's MMA fight, Melissa Madrinez versus Elise Reed. Man, Melissa, this is her UFC debut. She's got great KO power. She's got amazing footwork. She's got good takedown defense. And she has pretty good takedowns up against the cage. Elise Reed, she's been in the UFC. She, uh, you've probably seen her fight by now. She's got great power. She's got good grappling. She's got good cardio. She's a little bit of a slow starter. She's kind of hit or miss, you know, they showed an example, her last loss and then her win before that, um, she was kind of down on the card. She kind of came back. Her takedown saved her. Um, I just don't see Elise kind of pulling off that same type of, of grind out win as I, uh, with her other, with Melissa, as she has done with her on her other opponents. So for that reason, I think Melissa's going to get this one, even though it's her UFC debut. What do you think, Matt? You know, I agree with you. Because even though it's a UFC debut, she's one of the few that come out as a favorite in their debuts. Yeah. You know, different stage. But she has that, that Mexican boxing pressure, how she just pushes forward. She's good in the clinch game. She keeps it tight. She's very technical in her boxing, and I just think she's going to just overwhelm Elise. I think it'll be a decision, but it's going to – there might be a 10-8 round in there because she's going to get her up against the cage. She's going to use that dirty boxing, and she's just going to overwhelm her, and it's going to be a great fight. Next, uh, we got these Bantamweights, Chad Ellinger versus – Aten Heli. Elatang? Elatang, there we go. So, Chad Ellinger, he's fought in the UFC. So is Altatang. They're both orthodox fighters. But I think I think Elatang is going to get it done. And I'm going to go on a limb here. It's going to be KO. Ooh. He's going to catch him with a hook, stumble him. And it's going to finish with some ground and pound. And I just, I don't see it going three rounds, maybe two, but it's going to be a good fight. Ellinger's going to try to get in some wrestling. And I just think Altang's going to be too strong for him and keep it standing. What do you got, Charles? Man, I, I like Altang, man. I think he's very technical, uh, a powerful striker, and he can also grab her, grapple. He can grab her. <laughs> uh, Chad. Uh, Chad's very similar, man. I think he's a good, powerful striker. Um, I think he looks to use his takedowns to get ground and pound. Um, he's, he's, he's kind of 
good off the bottom to where he can sweep and get back up really well. Um, I do applaud him for that. Something I'm looking to do better in my own personal game. <clears throat> um, I think Chad, I think the difference between Chad and Haley is Chad kind of likes to make fights uh, a scrap. He, he kind of just gets in there and bang and, and, and throws as to where Haley is more technical. Um, if Chad can sucker Haley into to just a, a bang them all out war match that doesn't look good for Haley. And I think Chad can, can out scrap him. If Haley keeps it uh, technical and, and reminds himself that, that he's in an MMA fight and not a street fight and not scraps it out, he'll get the win. He's just got to play it smart. I think Chad needs to, you know, he's going to get that mullet power in a couple months if he keeps it growing. Hey, so. it's coming. <laughs> hey, I think that's what he's going for, actually. Yeah. It's, it's uh, For some reason, the mullet's making a comeback. My my son even kind of has, it's not really a mullet because his hair on top, but he's, his hair is longer right there. It's just kind of the style these days, it seems like. I, I told my kids, I said, shave your size. You got the length. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. I don't know. It looks good on my son. It looks 80s-ish, too. But yeah, it's, it's back. All right. Oh, next up, we have Norma Dumont versus Danielle Wolf. Norma Dumont, uh, man, uh, she's fought Elise Reed um, not that long ago, I think. No, wait. Was that Norma Dumont? Maybe not. Anyway. Norma Dumont, she's a striker. She's a grappler. She's got great top pressure and control. She's a true all-around, well-rounded mixed martial arts fighter. Danielle Wolf is a 1-0 MMA fighter, but she was a professional boxer. She's got great power, but she's a professional boxer. She's had one professional mixed martial arts fight, and I'm pretty sure that was on Dana White Contender Series. It was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, even though she's an elite grappler, she's not an elite mixed martial artist. Um, can elite grappler, professional grapplers do well in mixed martial arts? Yes. But throwing them in at the highest level right away to me is just not smart and a good idea. I don't think Danielle has the experience to beat Norma Dumont. I just don't. I'm taking Norma. Yeah. It reminds me of Greg Hardy. Came in 1-0 and and they're like, you need to go, you know, we'll sign you, but you're going to be on, you know, you're going to go do a couple of LFA fights, get your feet wet. Uh, Bo Nichols, you know, they're like, oh, we didn't sign him because he needs more experience. Mm -hmm. I know 145 is a very, very thin division. Yeah, for when but throwing her in with someone, you know, is – nine and two she's fought boxers she's fought grapplers she's fought jujitsu she, you know danielle wolf she looked okay in her contender series but she looked okay nothing, nothing against her skill set she's not mma ready yeah you know i would love to see her in lfa or invicta for a few fights yep. get that experience. i just think her the cage experience is not going to be there and she's She's going to be embarrassed. I hate to say it. Norma yeah. she's going to be a step ahead of her. She's yeah. going to know what to do. She knows the positions. She's trained it more and longer. Yeah, I, I know Daniel Wolf can kick my ass, and I, I admit that. Did. Probably. But so I. I no. not, she's a, a favorite for a reason, and she's going to get it done. Yep. Yep. Next up, we have the prelims on espn news you know because football college football so yes espn to, news or espn plus trying to compete with college football now yeah my huskers play at 7 30 comment the blow roast me i know <laughs> we got jake collier versus chris barnett you know i like chris barnett he is reminds me of Derek lewis yeah, you know, the body of you know, of white Goldman from 
dodgeball. Yeah. But he's got that power. Both coming off a loss. I just think I just think Colaire's gonna he's gonna be in a little better shape. He's gonna weather the storm first round. Barnett's gonna get tired and Collier's going to get tired, too, but Barnett's going to get tired first, and I think Collier's going to get it done. Hate to do it on my boy Chris Barnett, but Collier for the win. Yeah. Man, <clears throat> I think Jake Collier is more well-rounded than Chris Barnett. Chris Barnett, um, this is a weird word to describe him, but he he's very athletic for, for his size of uh, – his abilities and his dynamic shots uh, from spinning shots and crazy shots from angles um, are, are amazing. Um, but I think he's kind of living off of that one shot. Um, he, he's had one good KO spinning shot, and I think he's been overhyped because of it. Um, I don't think Chris Barnett is as good as people think he is just because he landed that one shot. Um, I, I think Jake's going to win this fight. Um, I, I think he will. Um, Chris Barnett does have a chance to land a knockout, but I, I think I think you're going to see a similar approach Chris took to Andre Arlaski, um in his last fight. I think with, with Barnett, too, he he's hesitant. Like yeah. he just waits for that shot, and I just think that that hurts him more. You know, yeah, he can find it, it's, like you said, very athletic. But I just think he's he doesn't pull the trigger like Derek Lewis does, or you know, yeah, he's Arlovsky. He's looking for the that that one shot punch instead of just fighting, just fighting and letting it come. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's constantly just looking for that that counter one punch knockout, which is exactly. good. Uh, but but you can't do that, and and you can't spend your whole fight just standing there waiting for someone to counter him. You know. Yeah. I mean, some guys do, but not good. Not good fights when they happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It doesn't make for a good fight. You know. Yeah. You end up getting you know, Thug Rose versus Carla Esparza type fight. Yeah. When things like that happen, Adesanya Romero. Adesanya Romero, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next up, Dennis Tuleman versus Jamie Pickett. Man, Tuleman, man, he always comes forward. Man, he's not afraid to slug it out with you. He's got great power, but. Uh, the, the only the only thing I see issues with him he's he does have a few holes in his grappling um Jamie Pickett man he's a solid striker he uses his range and length uh to kind of keep people away from him uh the problem with Jamie Pickett is he's a little gun shy man he's kind of afraid to throw off um and I think uh, I, th I think he's going to be too scared to engage with Dennis as to where Dennis is not going to be afraid to come forward and put the pressure on Jamie Pickett, and that's why he's going to win. I'm taking Dennis. What do you think? You know, this is, it's amazing that Pickett's favorite. I think he's favorited for this. It's no. kind of a toss-up. Yes, yes. Oh. Dennis is the underdog. Dennis yeah. is the underdog I think you should bet on in this fight. Sorry. I, I agree. Pickett has never fought well against pressure fighters. Dennis, you know, he's Russian. He's got the – his Sambo isn't the best, but he doesn't use wrestling enough to get, you know, good stats on him. He's, he's a pressure fighter. He pushes forward. You know, he doesn't walk with his chin out like most, you know, inexperienced uh, strikers do. He tucks it in. He walks you forward. And Pickett, has, he's not a counter striker. If he's not moving forward, he's not outputting. Yeah. I think Dennis is just going to march forward, and he's going to chin down and throw body shots, throw head shots. And Pickett, 
not worried about the grappling. He's got good defense. He's got pretty solid takedown offense as well. But he's not gonna he's not gonna strike enough, and it's gonna be an ugly, ugly decision. But Dennis get that money, he's gonna get the victory. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. All right, next fight. We're keeping it, you know, where I get the hard names. I know. I I got off easy this time. So we got Shamil Abdurkahimov versus Jelton Almeida. Yo, yo. Uh, this, this is another one. I just think Almeida, he, you know, he's going to look to get to the ground. But Shamil is, he's another Russian. You, these Russian fighters, if they get on top of you, it's, there's no getting up. It's very rare. You know, they're here to break you. Yeah. And I, I think even though it's a heavyweight fight, I think Shamil's gonna he's gonna mix in some grappling. He's got heavy shots, heavy hands, and he's gonna, he's gonna get the victory. Oh, you're taking Shamil? I'm taking Shamil. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's dangerous. I know. Jamil is super, super dangerous. He's he's got he, that cardio for heavyweight. Yeah, he he's always gonna gonna grind. But man, Halton Almeida is just I, I think he's something else, man. I just think I I think dude's the real deal. I I think he's really uh man. He's got power. He's got grappling. He's got pressure. Uh. He takes you down. He can ground and pound you. He can sub you. Um, he does get swept. He does make mistakes. He gets he gets a little overzealous when he takes you down, um, you know, and and he ends up getting swept sometimes from from top position. But I don't know, man. The the Halton Omida, who do, who do you? Oh, he fought that bum in the last fight at heavyweight. He moved up to heavyweight. And um, uh, I remember who he fought, but I this but fight like, just added, right? But it was like twenty seconds. No, his last fight, Halton Amita's last fight, where he moved up to heavyweight. Um, he beat him in like thirty seconds, twenty seconds. He just ran straight at him. Oh, we have a uh, breaking news. Recently, Shamil pulled out. So it's gonna be uh oh no Anton Turklev versus really? Halton at 220. Anton Turklev. Yep. Anton. Okay. Anton. I don't know anything about Anton Turklev off the top of my head. Bro. I'm changing my pick. Halton's gonna win. Yeah, Halton, uh, last minute replacement. I just think Halton's the beast, bro. Um, oh, yeah. I, I just, I don't, looks I don't like know. a Greek god. Yeah, I don't know much about Anton. Um, so I can't give you a good breakdown on him. But I just think Halton, man, he just, he's a future prospect for real, man. I really think we're going to see something out of him. Um, I think he's getting good matchups. I think Shamil was going to be a real good test for him. So, so I'm a little disappointed um, that that fight's not happening now. But. So quick breakdown on uh, Anton Turklov. He's nice. normally a lightweight. And he, he won contender series in July by decision. So he's short notice against... Uh, Houghton Almeida. He's 8-0. Anton He just won contender series. Okay. Yep. He's got a he's got decent, you know, spinning back fist KO, naked choke, ground and pound. He lost by decision. Oh, how is he 8-0 if he's lost by decision? Oh, I'm sorry. He's 16 and 2. No. I don't know. Halton for the win. Halton, let's go, baby. Sorry, Anton. Last minute replacement usually don't do well. No, especially he's going up. I mean, obviously he walks around around two twenty if that's the catch weight, and I think Halton's going to just be too strong for him. Yeah, too big, too. Strong. Good for him, you know. Show his his guts and glory and say, hey, "I'll take the fight." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he manned up 
For so sure. win or lose, he wins in the eyes of the UFC because yeah. they know they can trust him. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I like this next fight. Ooh. Next up, we have Hakeem Dadu versus Julian Arosa. Man, this should be a good fight. I'm actually looking forward to this one uh, as well. Man, Hakeem, dude, he's got really good pressure. Plus, he's a he's got great counter punches. He comes forward, throws those leg kicks at you. He's got great power. He's really technical. Man, Julian Arosa, dude is fun to watch, man. He's got uh, lots of finishes. He throws everything hard. Uh, he doesn't really use his BJJ that much. Um, I, I think Julian tends to get a little sloppy and, and relies on his toughness of his chin a little too much. Um, I think Hakeem should take the win in this one um, just because he's going to be more powerful and more technical of a fighter where Julian's probably going to tend to, to uh, turn it into a brawl after, after he starts getting frustrated. What do you think? You know, Julian, in that sense, reminds me of Cody Garbrandt. You know, like, great fighter. A little too emotional. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, starts swinging Hakeem's way. He just lifts that chin and just throws haymakers. But he's got that Colby Covington don't quit attitude. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, 145, it's fast-paced, but still packs power. I just think Hakeem is so fun to watch. He's got that speed. He does the flashiness. You know, yeah. he, I just think he's going to be a little too much. I might even might finish him. You know, if he can, if he can early on put pressure and make Arosa start thinking and getting frustrated, it's going to be a an easy night in the office, as they would say. Yeah, I I think you'll know by the end of the first round whether he'll get the finish or not. You'll be able to tell um, if the first round just goes okay, he'll grind it out. But if he's yeah. really coming ahead at the end of the first round, he'll probably finish it. Uh, uh, Hakeem will probably finish a Rosa in round two. I agree. All right. We're ready for the, the main card? Yes. On to the main. All right. The first fight up is – the former stripper, your boy, Johnny Walker, not the whiskey, the fighter, against Eon, the incredible Hulk, Kutalaba. I'm going to tell you right now, Charles, I do not like this fight. Why not? Johnny Walker, since he blew out his arm doing the worm after a KO, he hasn't been the same. No. And so much talent. But unfortunately, I just... He, you know, mental aspect is 90% of the fight game. And I think after he blew out his shoulder celebrating, he hasn't been, he hasn't been the same. I want to say he's, what, three-fight losing streak? I think so. Three. So for right. him, this is make and break. And they're not, you know, they're not like, oh, here's, you know, an easy guy. Ian hits hard. And he's going to, he's going to, do what the rest have done. Going to KO and walk right past Johnny Walker. And I hate to say it. I like Johnny Walker, but kids don't do the worm in celebration. And uh, I, I, heard some, I heard somebody else say, uh, this is a battle of the busted prospects. Uh, both of these dudes have fought the who's who of the division uh, you know, with mixed results. Everybody was saying both of these guys were going to be somebody, and, and it kind of just never turned out. Johnny Walker, he was fun. He was fast. He was powerful. He was wild. He was athletic. He was unorthodox. He was. 
he was all those things, but he isn't anymore, man. He's turned into a gun shy shell of himself. Um, he changed gyms, and this gym has act absolutely ruined his style. Um, yeah. John, Johnny Walker, you need to change gyms again. Move somewhere else. This new gym isn't doing it for you. I don't know what the hell they're telling you, but stop listening to them. It reminds me of uh, Shabayan with Rousey. It's like he, he, you know, this gym is filling his head, and it's like you, you oh. got to get out of there, kid. Same shit. Yep. It, same exact. Same. Yeah. Not not same exact thing, but yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, um, and- you got to get a coach that you know he's got to be honest. Like Leon Edwards coach, you know, he goes, you've done it now. You want to win, you got to finish. You know, he was honest with them. He wasn't like, oh, you know, I love Rose coach, but they're like, oh, you got this, you know, and look what happened. You're doing great. Yeah. 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 Armchair <laughs> coach right here. Just, just, just not working out for you, bro. Ian Kutalaba, he's a grappler. He's got power. He's kind of a phone booth fighter. He's really good on the ground, um, but he has to use body locks and kind of trip you to take you to get down there, which some people think are sloppy and it doesn't look good as a double leg or or something. Um, Yeah, man. This fight is one that, we could probably do without seeing, you know, <laughs> honestly. Um, yeah, uh, I wish I wish we could see that old form of Johnny, but I, I just don't think we ever will again. Yeah, like you said, that that mental aspect has just affected him too much at this point, which sucks. Um, yeah, I think Eon should, should get this one as well. All right, another women's MMA fight. Irene Eldana versus Macy Chisholm. Irene, man, she's very technical. She's a boxer. She's got great power. She has amazing takedown defense. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the 80s. She's got really high takedown defense. Macy Chisholm, she's tall and long. She likes to use her jab to get in there to use her Muay Thai. She keeps her distance. Plus, she's getting better at grappling, as shown in her last fights, where she's she's getting takedowns. Um, I think she needs to manage distance and work in takedowns. And Macy has a shot at winning this fight. Um, Irene, with, with being the technical boxer she is, um, she, if she were to put the pressure on Macy uh and and is able to stop all of the takedowns she could win this fight she really could just because her takedown defense is so high um i do think macy is gonna win this one i think it's gonna be a big grind um to a decision though what about you you know macy beat norma dumont who's on the early prelims you know at 145 now she's coming down to 135. Irene, she's got power. And she does have 84% you know, takedown defense. But all of those takedown attempts were open. You know, they were in the open. Macy, she's, uh-huh. she's a grinder. She clenches. Yeah. I think she could get a trip in there and sneak a takedown. That's a good point. You know, and I Macy is the underdog. I believe it's plus 160. Ooh, that's, that's not, a good dog. Not know. a bad bet. Yeah. I think she's going to win by decision. I think she's going to grind it out. She's, she's got three and a half inch reach advantage. Keep your distance. Pepper them legs. Clinch when you got it against the cage. And I, I think she she's smart. I think she knows that, and she's going she's gonna to get the victory. Nice. Upset, too, because she's ranked 10th. I think she's going to do it. I really do. 
I, I really think she's going to get it, bro. Yep. So Dennis Tolman and Macy Chisholm, underdog upset of the week. This is where the money's at, we think. Oh, yeah. This next fight, catch weight bout. Yes. We got Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. It's so funny. It's a 180 catch weight. I know. It's like Holland was like, oh, I don't want to gain the five pounds. Holland's always underweight. Every time he yeah. weighs in at middleweight, he's always weighs in at like 182, 183. I think he walks through it. I really think he would do numerous changes. If, like He'd be really good at 170, but it's such a wrestling-heavy division. I think that's why he underweights it at 185 because there's not a lot of wrestlers at middleweight. You got Gastelum. You got Rodriguez, but it, here's the crazy stat. Kevin Holland is 50% on his takedown defense. Interesting. Yeah, every time I see him. But the bad thing, you know, Holland's been working with Cormier, though. So last fight, we did see a lot of difference in his defense. Yeah, there was some improvement, for sure. Yeah, and he's got that power. If he just flicks you on the head, you're falling. You know, this is a tough one to pick. I've, I've weighed my options. Holland is the favorite, and I think he's going to be the bigger, stronger guy. Rodriguez, you know, he has decent grappling, but he likes to strike. Yeah. I think I think Holland's going to, you know, sit back on his jab and use a seven-inch reach superiority and get the victory. K-O. Man, this this is an, an exciting fight. Uh, originally, I heard it was going to be Kevin Holland versus Stephen Thompson, but then that got changed for for that was like UFC eighty one or something. Yeah, and remember I texted you that, and I was like, oh shit! But then like the next day, it was announced Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. This is still almost just as exciting fight. Daniel Rod Rodriguez is an exciting prospect, man. Uh, he's a boxer. He picks his shots. He's got good cardio. He's really powerful. Kevin Holland, man, he's super accurate. He's got powerful striking. He's, his wrestling does need work, but he can sub you from the ground. I, I, think, I think maybe that's why he hasn't put all that time into his wrestling. It's just because he feels comfortable on the ground until he, he, um, until he got laid and prayed by uh, – um, what's his name? Basically, just laid on him. No, he finished him, didn't he? Uh, let's see. No, we got Vittori and Brunson. Brunson, Brunson. Yeah. yeah. So Brunson basically figured figured out how to get him down and figure out he was he was comfortable with people taking him down, and he just didn't care. Um, I think this is going to be a, a striker versus striker fight, right? And Kevin Holland should come out the better striker in this matchup. Um, he just has to, to watch out for those powerful blows of Daniel Rodriguez. Well, it's crazy because Rodriguez, you know, he's a punches and bunches guy, but he's got power. Like he, you know, 8.6 significant strikes landed per minute, where Holland is the, you know, pepper him and then throw the big shots. And he's yeah. at almost four per minute so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a brawl yeah it yeah these two are gonna get it get into a fight you know yeah for sure and um, that's what the fans like to see that's why it's that middle car that middle fight this should be a good good feature fight for sure uh i'm excited the co-main event man who else but in the co-main event spot tony ferguson Whereas Li Jing Lang, man, Li Jing Lang is a boxer. He's got great volume. He mixes in his low kicks. He has some holes in his grappling as well. Tony Ferguson, man, everybody knows who Tony Ferguson is. He was on a 12 fight win streak. Everybody said Tony Ferguson was going to be the next man. Now he's on a four fight losing streak. Tony Ferguson has constant pressure. 
he was a collegiate wrestler, but he's developing chin issues. Man, I just, uh, uh, I think Tony, I think Tony has a good chance to actually win this fight. Um, I, I just hate picking against him. Uh, I, I think, I think age is finally just getting to Tony, you know, uh, he, he thinks in his head that he's still the, the 21 year old can take anything, uh, fighter and he fights like it you know but he's he's not 21 years old and i think tony ferguson just needs to settle down just a little bit i know that's weird to say because that's his style but as he becomes more mature he needs to act like a more mature fighter and if he can do that just a little bit i really think he can pull this win off i'm rooting for you tony let's go you know, like you said, it's so hard to go against El Kakui. Man. Just, you know, the fight that got away after he injured his knee, is that seems to be when he went downhill. I think a lot of that is not the knee, it's the age. You know, he was out, he was at 34, out two years, fought, you know, Gaethje, Oliviera, Dariush, Chandler. Chandler and Gaethje, out of those four, the only two that finished him, they hit hard. He won on a tear, bro, yeah. And yeah. he was in some battles. Yeah. He's – when he fought Kevin Lee and he was just like, ah. But Jingling, they're putting Jingling in this position to gauge where's Ferguson at in his career and where's Jingling in his career. You know, 34, 38. I, I'm with you. I – I got to go with Ferguson, not because of here, because of here. Yeah. He's given us so many good fights. It, it's going to be tough to watch, but if Ferguson can change his game plan from the go and get him to the wait and hit him, and it can be done. You yeah. know, a lot of fighters change their styles. They get older. And I think, Ferguson needs to go back to use his grappling, you know, throw in Granby rolls, try to get the legs, take him out. Yeah, it's time, bro. You you gotta people have figured it out. It's time you gotta evolve and develop and, and turn into something new. Otherwise, you're not you're just not gonna be able to compete at the highest level anymore. If you want to continue, if he wants to continue to compete. At the highest level in the USC, he has to evolve and change his game up. Yeah. Um, yeah, he he had the health issues too. Them. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he definitely has had lots of lots of issues. Yeah, he's his body has taken a lot of abuse. People don't realize that how how uh, they see it, but they don't truly understand how much damage he's taken. Like I've I've barely I'm barely a MMA fighter and my body has taken some damage and has some pains every day that it hurts. So when you, when you put that into perspective of into the battles, Tony Ferguson has that dude is fucked up, you know, 11 years in the UFC. Yeah, bro. That's fighting the who's who the top of the, easy. Top. that is not yeah. easy. I'm telling you. All that, right. you you ready for this one? Yes, I am. Before we get into it, I'm just going to say this card is the teaser because they moved a lot, you know, title fights from this card to 280. Yeah. And so we got Hamzat Shemaev versus Nate Diaz. Yes. Now, Diaz, out of all the wars he's been in, he's got a chin. Hamza, last last fight, he did not – he didn't look like he took it seriously. Some could say he lost. It was a very close fight. I think he did do enough to beat Gilbert Burns. Yeah. Yeah. It was ugly, but I think it was good that he had that type of fight because his coach, you know, back to the corner, like the coaches, his coaches told him, like, quit messing around. You're not following our game plan. He didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think Hamza is definitely at all. Hamzat's gonna, you know, 
What do you say? I'm here to smash everybody. Smash. I think it starts with Diaz. I think he's going to come in and I love Nate Diaz. But Nate Diaz, you could tell what Diaz is going to show up to fight on the lead up of the fight. Yep. And if, you know, if what he's been tweeting, he's here to get a paycheck, not here to get a win. He might get one good shot like uh, he did against Edwards, but Shamayev is just going to keep that O and cash in the bank. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody wants to see Nate Diaz pull off that upset. Just, just, just to ruin the parade. Just to, oh, it would ruin just, the just to give a big f you to the UFC. On yeah, the he's gonna go fight Jake Paul, ruin right. everything over here. Right, right, yeah. That's 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 his thought process. Right after UFC, now then he's gonna go fight the Paul brother. You know. Uh. Anyway, Hazmat man, dude, dude's gotta be the most popular dude in MMA right now, man. Oh, yeah. uh, by far yeah man it, it's crazy everybody's everybody's sh- showing pictures of them training with them on instagram everybody wants to train with them you know uh he's he's an amazing wrestler he's got grappling he's got powerful hands he's got great takedowns he can ground and pound you he can sub you nate diaz is an absolute legend he's been in the ufc and MMA for a long time. Uh, I mean, he's been in the M- MMA game for 20 years now. Uh, um, he's a high volume striker with amazing cardio and slick BJJ. Yep, like you said, dude's got a chin, man. Uh, I wish I had that man's chin. He can just take punch after punch like it ain't shit and, and keep going forward. Um, yeah. I, I think this is an interesting, weird matchup. Um, I think Cosmos is going to keep his O as well. Um, yeah, I just – everyone's saying, oh, don't rule Nate Diaz out. Nate Diaz has a chance. I don't think Every, he does, man. Everyone's got a chance. You know, everyone – but Nate Diaz sure, is not sure. a power puncher. Right. Everybody's got a chance, but – one thing Diaz has going for him is it's five rounds and he gets better every round where most fighters get tired every round. Yeah. 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 I just, I, I think Cosmot's going to finish Nate Diaz, bro. I think I do too. Yeah. He's going to finish him. Be the second person to do it after Josh Thompson. Yeah. I, 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 I just, yeah, that's just what I see happening for some reason. I, I think he does. He's huge. He's I think so he gets it done. Yeah, yeah. And and then he's gonna go on to fight for the title probably after that. Yeah. Which, which I think is a little quick, and and fighting someone like Nate Diaz to get a title fight seems kind of weird. I kind of want to see him fight Colby Covington because that will really because Colby Covington is number one behind. Camaros. Actually, that's a good idea. I think he should have one more fight yeah. before he gets to a title fight, honestly. And yeah, Colby he... Covington makes sense. Uh, I, w- I would like to see that, actually. Colby Covington versus Cosmot next. That yeah. Would be a good fight. Because oh, yeah. Colby Col- would not try to stand and bang. He would force him to wrestle, you know? Yeah. So... I think yeah, I think that has the potential to be a good fight. Matchmaker Matt Johnson. Yes, yes. <laughs> Send out them tweets, man. Oh, check out the bet I won last week. It was just a little bet. It wasn't much. Uh, Christian Gonzalez, little sprinkle on him. Thank you, Christian. I did win one and lose one. I placed that other bet. On Robert Whitaker and Alessio Detro. Alessio, man, you got knocked out, bro. You let me down. Two dudes in a cage, UFC 279. Man, let us know what you think. Check us out. Hit us up in the comments. Like our Facebook page. We're on Facebook. We're going to be sending out 
quick picks, best bets on Facebook. Once we ramp our page up enough, we're going to be posting everything on there. Check out our videos. We're taking over. Two dudes in a cage. All right. If you guys want to do a business shout out, you know, comment, message us. I'm going to do one. Look at this little cute guy. Charles, look at this guy. Oh, look at that guy. If you want a look French cute. bulldog, English bulldog, go to Instagram, 402 underscore bulldogs underscore. Best in the Midwest. I mean, can you not see how cute that bulldog was? One more time. One more time. Come on. Let's see him again. Look at this little guy. Yeah, he's so cute. Oh, he's like, what is going on right now? What are you doing? I would lift the other one, but he's 57 and a half pounds. So. Too big. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't hear you. you hear the peanut guy? All right. Here we go. Come here. <laughs> you gotta get oh, you a bulldog. You gotta get. You oh, a bulldog. look! He's like, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, nice. That's an awesome shot. Out. Look, look at how sweet they are. I mean, come on, two dudes in a cage. This has been another analysis and prediction. Check us out. Hit us up. We want to know what you think. We are out.